In this video, we will learn how to apply Kremer's rule in finding the equilibrium price given the demand and supply functions. The question is the demand and supply functions for two interdependent goods are given by we are being given the demand function of good one is q1d is equal to 400 minus 5p1 plus 3p2 p1 and p2 are the prices of good one and good two quantity supplied of good one is again a function of only uh, the price of good one and we have another uh, demand function for good two is being given as 300 minus 2p1 minus 3p2 and correspondingly it is supply function is being given as q2s is equal to minus 100 plus 2p2 we need to find out the equilibrium price of good one using Kremer's rule okay so how do we use the equilibrium sorry the Kremer's rule first let us find out the equilibrium conditions for two goods okay so for good one what will we do uh, for equilibrium okay in the first market that means uh, demand should be equal to supply in the first market that means quantity uh, q1 d should be equal to q1s okay demand for good one should be equal to supply for good one that implies this is the demand for good one that is 400 minus 5 p1 uh, minus 3 p2 should be equal to minus 60 plus 3 p1 let us solve it for uh, okay so i can write it in this fashion so we have 3 p1 minus if i transpose it will become plus 5 p1 so uh, 3 plus 5 is 8 p1 let me write it here 8 p1 okay transposing this it will become plus again we have 3 p2 is equal to we have 400 transposing this it will get added with this 400 so it becomes 460 okay we are not uh, even applying the Kremer's rule yet we are just solving for equilibrium for good uh, you know market for good one so we got this equation symmetrically for equilibrium in the uh, you know second good for equilibrium quantity demanded of good two should be equal to the quantity supplied of good two quantity demanded of good two is being given as says 300 minus 2 p1 minus 3 p2 and it should be equal to this sub you know quantity supplied that is obviously the equilibrium condition minus 100 plus 2 p2 again writing in this fashion so we have minus 2p transposing it will become 2p2 okay then we have minus 3p2 if i transpose it here so sorry we have this 2p1 first okay then if i transpose 3p2 it will get added with this so 3 plus 2 is 5 so i get 5 p2 is equal to so 300 plus 100 is 400 okay so we got two equations with two unknowns now we need to apply the kramer's rule okay to find the equilibrium price of good one we will apply the kramer's rule okay so first thing is we have to you know express these two system of equations in matrix form okay so in this form let me write it here so to apply Kramer's rule we write it uh, we express these system of equations in matrix form we write a x is equal to b and what is a a is simply and let me write it here a is a matrix which is composed of the coefficients of p1 and p2 okay here the coefficient of p1 is 8 so i will write here 8 coefficient of uh, p1 in the second equation is 2 so let me write it here 2 then we have 
uh, the coefficients of p2 are 3 and 5 let us write it here 3 and 5 so our a is the coefficient matrix okay and what is x x is the solution vector okay what we need to find out x is p1 and p2 what we need to find out p1 and p2 and b is simply b is the vector of constant terms so b will be this 460 and 400 460 and 400 okay now to apply creamer's rule first we need to uh, you know take the determinant of this coefficient matrix so we have the determinant is simply found out by we multiply these two elements so uh, air phi's are 40 to this we subtract the product of these two elements that's two threes are six which comes out to be 34 since it is greater it is not equal to zero so we can move further that means the system of equation is, is feasible so we will get a solution here okay if it is was if it was equal to zero then we could not find out the solution that means the system of equations is not feasible okay now to apply the creamer's rule here what we need to do or rather to find out the equilibrium price of p1 okay so uh, let me write it here uh, to solve for p1 and let me write it here to solve uh, for p1 what will we do we will uh, replace the column one of the coefficient matrix with the vector of constant terms and form a new matrix and so to solve for p1 we replace we replace column 1 column 1 of coefficient matrix with vector of constant terms that is uh, with this b and form new matrix new matrix a1 okay so our new matrix will be formed by replacing the first column of this coefficient matrix okay so in place of 8 and 2 we write the vector of constant terms that is 460 and we have 400 okay and let's be very specific with the colors then we have 3 and 5 okay what i have done here uh, to find the value of p1 we replace the first column of the coefficient matrix with the vector of constant terms and form new matrix that is a1 is equal to this after that we take the determinant of this a1 so the determinant of a1 again multiplying these two elements so five zeros are zero five six are 30 five fours are 20 and we will get 2300 minus four threes are 1200 which comes out to be 1100 i guess so four threes are 12 23 minus 1200 comes out to be 1100 then the equilibrium price of p1 is simply equal to the new matrix state is a1 the determinant of new matrix upon the determinant of the coefficient matrix okay which is a so a1 is 1100 upon a is 34 okay so when you solve this 1100 uh, upon 34 you will get something 
I'm not sure about the decimals, but it will be, uh, you know, 32.6, uh, uh, 0.67 or I don't know. So 1100 upon 34 will be equal to this. Okay. What about uh, uh, if we have to find out the equilibrium price of P2? If we want to find the equilibrium price of P2, what will we do? We will form a new matrix. Okay. And in this case, we will replace the second column of the coefficient matrix with the vector of constant terms. Okay. Since we are being told to find out the equilibrium price of good one only. So this is done here. Uh, what if we were told to find out the equilibrium price of P2? In this case, we would have formed a new matrix A2 such that we replace the second column of the coefficient matrix with the vector of constant terms. So second column, uh, second column, first column will remain same. That is A2, and in place of this, we would have in place of 3, 5, we will write 460 and 400. And after that, we would have taken the determinant of this new matrix. Okay. So 8, 4, the 32, 3200. Uh, this will come out to be 920. Okay. So this would have been... 0, 0, 0, 0, uh, 0, so 10 minus 2 is 8, then we have 11 minus 9 is 2, so we will get 200, uh, 2280, and equilibrium price of P2 would have been equal to the determinant of new matrix that is A2 upon the determinant of the coefficient matrix that is 2 to 8 naught upon 34 and here you will get a number that will be the equilibrium price of P2 okay so I'm not sure what will be this equal to so uh, the equilibrium price of P1 is equal to 32 point some decimals okay I hope I make myself clear. Thank you.